Hello, how is, uh, how is everybody doing? Uh, I know you're doing great today. So actually, this is my first time of going live on YouTube and also uh, Facebook Live. My name is Kwame Frempon. I am a marriage and family therapist. Joining me today is Minister David Campbell. Minister, welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I am so excited you, when we decided to do these things here uh, because Minister David, when he wanted to marry, he went all the way to Ghana. That is the part I really, really want to understand why, why he did that. Across the ocean to pick up, you know, uh, a lady. So I'd like you to actually um, join us. I didn't do any announcement today. Today is my first time this year of coming on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So I don't know how many people I, I, I expect, but this is Kwame Frimpong. Uh, KF Life Coaching, and today again I'm joining with uh, Minister David on the on the on the program. So we, we we just want to wait a little bit, you know, to see whoever happens to be on on the show today because we have something very uh, interesting, very profound, powerful to share about marriage, you know. So that's 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 what we're going to do today. Let's do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So uh, today the conversation is, we're going to go ahead and get started. Because the conversation is, you can see on your screen, navigating cultural differences in marriage. Navigating cultural differences in marriage. And so I just want to, we're going to talk about how, how do, because today the world is becoming one big village. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, we are becoming one big village. And so, um, how, how what, what, what are some of the things? So, tell me more. Let's get started. How did you uh, even start all these um, cultural marriage? How did it all get started? Um, honestly, um, not by might, <laughs> not by power. <laughs> um, it was more something that I just kind of uh, stumbled into. Okay. Um, I think sometimes God will begin to orchestrate your life in mm -hmm. a way to get you there. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, I'm, you know, born and bred and proud of being American. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, being raised here in the South, but also being raised um, back in New York, you are exposed to many different cultures. And okay. Like that. Okay. So, so being around culture wasn't exactly new. Mm. Oh, you know, I yeah. see. I was raised in the Bronx, New York, where there's a lot mm -hmm. of culture. School was, you know, was really cultural as well. But how I really kind of came into this was really uh, God led. Mm. Because it wasn't something that I would have done right by myself because mm -hmm. it was never important to me. You know, you know, I was raised um in like Jamaican church and then from there I went to like a like a church of God in Christ and just oh, you know, okay. non denominational and so on. So I get to experience different flavors, um, of worship and, and, and and of course, um different things. Okay. But how I met my wife was really, really I think by God given hands. So so it's 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 interesting because you were raised in New York. Mm -hmm. You were raised in Bronx. Mm -hmm. And so you have had an exposure right. to differences in culture. Uh, so growing up with all these cultures, you grew up in different culture. Did you, how did that impact you? Um, to me, um, I think it was... It wasn't until I got married that I really understood what the impact was. Because, oh, I see. Yeah, because being um, back in the Bronx, being in school, you know, your worldview mm -hmm. about school is, you know, is only but so much because, you know, kids don't really know about racism of such mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. they're young. Mm -hmm. You just see your friend. Yes. Your friend just happened to be Asian or Hispanic, mm -hmm. but it's just your friend. Mm -hmm. Um, as you get older, then you start being exposed to racism, then you start seeing yeah. that. So then you start to either pull back and the people who you were once with, you start to see them differently, even mm. though when you were children, you didn't see that. Hold on, let's talk about that a little bit. So when, when you were, when, during childhood, mm -hmm. like kids, they don't see color, they don't see anything different. No. It is when people grow up, right. then it, it becomes something else. Right. And so you, for you, it was normal. We are all normal. Right. We are having a good time. Right. But at, later on in adulthood, that's when you begin to see uh, this other issue that we face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You start being exposed to racism, and then you start to uh, sometimes socially mm -hmm. um, have to 
pick a side, which is yeah. really unfortunate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so then you start thinking, okay, well, I'm African American, right? And of course, what that entails. Mm-hmm. Of course, you won't understand because you, you know you're not being exposed to what it is on the other side. Exactly. So then those lines are drawn, mm. um, and then you start kind of being conscious about what you are and who you are, and mm-hmm. that kind of changes how you interact with people as well. Mm. So, so, so let's go. Let's go into it. So, how did it all get started? Um, what part of it? <laughs> well, so he married uh, 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 an African, an African American minister married a Ghanaian woman. So sh- share with us some of your experiences, actually. Um, it's been really, really good. Um, for the simple fact is, it's um, when I met her, mm. uh, I didn't know that I would marry her. It wasn't even remotely what it is. And uh, um, at, at the time, life happened. Yes. Yes, life happened. Mm-hmm. And I met this really extraordinary pastor, Dr. Okay. Frank, mm-hmm. Dr. Frank of Swapia, right? Mm-hmm. I hope I said his name correctly. Okay, so Bishop Frank of Swapia, he's our senior pastor, and he's saying that he met him. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, he sat me down and told me things that no other human being could have known. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that was the beginning of my journey. Mm. And, um, you know, so here I am um, in a church with mostly people from, from Africa. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first two or three months were probably the toughest because the language barrier. Because of the language barrier. Yeah. Yeah. So you first joined church. You love the church. You love pastor, but language barrier. Yes. It was a language barrier. Um, it was a few times as he spoke or possibly anyone that spoke. I was like, I'm sorry. Say what? Yes. Say what? <laughs> right. Okay, what was that? You know, and, um, you know, I would see folks would laugh at certain things that he would say. I'm like, okay. What did you say? <laughs> I didn't get it. You right. know, I hear uh, 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 things like, um, um, oh. Okay. And I thought, oh, was just oh, but apparently in the language, you know. <laughs> it was, it means something different. It meant something different. So, right. that, you know, so, so there were things that, you know, I had to listen and mm-hmm. overcome. Um, but I think I realized that we're not so far and different because mm. you, know, you may say, oh, you know, to, to fulfill a meaning of the sentence, mm-hmm. and I'll probably say something different. Right. So then I realized, okay, we're not. Same really, expression, but different diff- way of different expressing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so it's not so bad. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I was willing to, to learn. That's good. Yeah. And, and I think what, what culture does, culture exposes all the parts of you that need to grow up. If culture mm-hmm. exposes the part of you, that you need to grow up yes wow Mm -hmm. it does that is profound Mm -hmm. no no so 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 there's there are there are parts of us Mm -hmm. that culture will cause a growth in that area Mm -hmm. so if 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 god gives you the grace to be exposed or network or connect with another culture Mm -hmm. is going to even grow you advance you mature you yes it will Yes, well, it, 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 it's being in this church and being around my wife that I have found true expression. Mm. I have found a lot about who I am um, as, as a person because being around someone that's different, mm-hmm. they expose all your prejudice, all the things that you didn't think you had inside <laughs> of you, all the things that you didn't know that you liked. Wow. And then all those things start to come up to the surface because now someone does it totally different from you. And your norms is not their norms. I, I learned something in school called group studies. Mm-hmm. That whenever you join a group, immediately you see something about you you never saw before. Right. Group, when you become a part of a group, it will expose something. Mm-hmm. So for you, marrying to your wife, uh, you have it, it has exposed some things you never knew. Yes. And it has caused, tell me more about that. Uh, um, example. So, um, marrying someone uh, from Ghana, um, I remember uh, the, uh, the first few times um, a person died. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, she's like, okay, um, you know, we have to do some things and, you know, we have to get some some soda and some thing. I'm thinking, why? We can just go. <laughs> That's so can, funny. We can just go visit the person. No, no, you can't just go visit it. You, know, you, you have to bring some soda in. And I'm thinking, um oh, okay. wow what's the importance of that so you know I, i've had to learn how to rephrase my question Your okay. questions. yeah I, I, um what's the relevance of that and she's like well you know by doing this you, know, you honor the person i'm like 
Oh. Wow. So that's what this is for. So now when she say, you know, if like a person die, I know, okay, hey, some water, let's get some, some water. soda, let's get an some envelope. Soda. Okay, is that $50, $150, $200? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I know how to navigate that. Wow. Yeah. So even the culture, it's the, the nuances. The culture itself and the things we we do, we're, com- we're, we're completely not familiar with those. Right. And when you ask the questions, how would she respond? I think that was probably um, the beauty of maturity. Wow. And, and I think it makes a difference because if a person is not mature, mm-hmm. then they can, in some means of waste, be offended by that. Mm. But knowing that I didn't know, she said, well, here's why we do this. <laughs> You know, in, you know, and she didn't say in our culture mm-hmm. because you know if she, if she, you know if she had said that it would have been to to push you keep me away mm-hmm. because it's hanging on to something mm-hmm. that that's only you can share. Yes, but I can be a part of it. So she would say, "Here's what we do. Wow, we do this because it honors the person. You know, we go and we say this. You wow, know, we, you know, we stand this way. You know, we, you know, we probably say these things. You know, we 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 buy these different things so other people can partake and be a part of." that part of mm. you know, the morning part of it. And, and I think that was based on how that was presented. I think that was a big key why it was easy to accept. It. So the way we communicate, you know, and across the board, whether you are all from Ghana or you are all Americans or Russians or Germans, the, the, the choice of words, the language we use, mm-hmm. the phrases can let your spouse hear you better. Yes. Or can be defensive. Right. But for you, the beauty of integrating uh this or i would say acculturation acculturate right is the fact that the language that your wife used um calls you to want to know more about yes. the culture yes and it's, it's interesting that you know you 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 it's very very easy when, that when you and i are talking that i will say hey we are, we are going to funeral Right. Or somebody dies and we are going and we are taking this with us. We need water and all that. It's easy for me to not worry. I to, to automatically think you understand that. Right. <laughs> right. And, 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 and that can be a part of the danger of culture is assume that the person will understand because it's what I know. Mm. But that's not necessarily because you have to understand that, um, you know, I think um, our Dr. Frank will say this, you know, we're all in the same space, mm-hmm. but we're not in the same place. That's good. And therefore, because of how I was raised and my exposure and my upbringing may not have allowed me to be even know what that is. Mm-hmm. So therefore, when you present that to me, our natural instinct is going to be one of resistance because yes. I don't really know what that is. That is good. So until I'm clear as to what that is and get some kind of clarification, I'm, I'm going to be resistant. Right. right? But be marriage, you know, marriage is based on teaching you more about yourself mm-hmm. um, because that's what marriage does. That is very, that's very, yeah. very significant. If you are joining us today, we are talking about um, cultural differences in marriage, and it may not be applicable to you. But we live in a world today that all of us have become one, mm-hmm. and not only this is not not only is this important in two different culture, but I believe that in every marriage it's bilingual. Yes. You know, if you don't know how to speak in a way that your husband or your wife right. understand and it's the, the ways that um, um, because some phrases you use may not bother you, but it right. may bother me. The phrases I use may not bother me, but it may bother you. Right. And learning that from each other is critical part of making this marriage beautiful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But for you, you have to learn a lot of things right. um, in in the culture, uh, in the Ghanaian culture, so you can you can go along with it. And, and, and I think what it is, if you marry someone from any kind of a culture, even if it's a different tribe, mm-hmm. I think there's a there is a responsibility for you to learn that mm-hmm. because you're with that person and that person is going to express themselves in what they know. Right. Not necessarily what you know. Mm-hmm. And they should be allowed to fully be them. Don't you yeah. think as a coach, and by the way, he's a coach. Don't you think as a coach, and I don't know whether you do that or not. Sorry if we had some keyboard fell down. Perfect. Don't you think 
So we had a, a little, um, you know, hiccup. The, our keyboard just fell down. So thank you. Don't you think that as a coach, it will be good to, um, when you are going to marry somebody from a different culture, to sit down and discuss, you know, some of these cultural norms and belief systems? What do you think about um, that? It's important. And I think, you know, the point um, that you bring up is excellent. Here's why. Because most people just go into marriage with the assumption that I'll get it. Marriage is one of the few things that you get a certificate to start. <laughs> before you marry. Yeah. Before you get married. Yeah. Where everything is in life, there is some kind of a, you know, prep that mm -hmm. you have to do yes. before you get that. Yes. Right? Yes. So you're kind of at... Um, you're kind of behind the eight ball already. And then uh, if you add a culture into that, you're kind of behind even again, because there's this thing that you don't know. That you don't know. Right. So my norms, example, the weather, I like the cold. My wife don't like the cold. Oh, wow. yes. I love the cold. Not many people like the cold. They mm -hmm. like the heat. Mm -hmm. She likes the heat. I don't actually like the heat. So you, <laughs> so you can just imagine the thermostat in the house right. is going up and down because, you know, <laughs> she's freezing. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. And she's like, no, no, but it's cold. And then I just said, like, oh, I'm good, but I'm thinking, yeah, but I'm hot. Yes. You know, so, so, so uh, culture, it's important that, that, that as a coach or, or even um, as a professional as you are mm. to really begin to sit people down One second, and, please. Yes. And, and get them to understand mm -hmm. why culture is so important and that you basically have a responsibility that if you marry someone from Nigeria or from Jamaica or from mm -hmm. any country or continent that's different from yours, you have an obligation to learn that. To learn that? Mm -hmm. It's important. That both of you, you have to learn more about the Ghanaian culture, for right. example, your, and your wife has to also understand where you're coming from. Right. So during the course of your marriage, did you sit down and discuss these differences and how to blend? Um, we did. And, mm -hmm. and I think like a lot of that was brought about um, my exposure in church. Okay. You know, from the marriages, mm -hmm. from um, even when a child being blessed. Um, that was probably like an eye opener. I've never seen that many people up on stage um, for a child, um, you know, being blessed. I've never seen music in, a, in an introduction and people dancing coming in. You know. <laughs> wow! So that first time, I'm like, "What in Jesus' name <laughs> is this?" Um, wow! Okay, why do we have an entrance? And then she's like, "Well, number one, you know, because back in Nigeria, you know, it's a celebration of life." I'm like, "Oh, okay." So for a sudden, I start dancing. I didn't get it. But the fact that it was a celebration of life. A celebration of life. And that was important as a baby. Then I mm -hmm. could link celebration of life to a baby, to, mm. to why they would. And, 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 you know, that was able to bridge the gap for me. So it was more of an experience. And, and then just being open to it. Just yeah, being, just being, being open. open to it. Mm -hmm. Just being open to it. To, to, to want to learn. Yes. Because if you're not open to learn, um, you just, you, 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 the two of you cannot merge right you can't cannot blend right and then if that doesn't happen then what, what what happens is chaos chaos yeah because then you start to take sides you know so if an issue comes up example like a like a black lives matter mm -hmm. um you know where as an american being raised here being exposed to the cops and being exposed to how ugly you know folks can be mm -hmm. if you're from uh, uh um west africa the racism there is probably a little different. It's different. From it is here. Yes. This one here is more of a heartfelt. Mm. It, is, it is passed on from generation to generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So you see your parents and your mom have this disdain for police, and, and, and they tell you how to behave, and then it just becomes a natural part of your growing up. So when those buttons are, are, are pushed, you know, if you're from West Africa or from a different country, you may not understand why. It's so deep within me, I'm even sure. though it's not my experience. Yes. You know, but it's a part of how I was raised. Mm. Those were the reality of, you know, how I was raised. And therefore, even though it's not directly me, it does affect me. Mm. You know, so being able to 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 really explain what that is and why the feelings are like that, um, you know, it's important. And of course, you know, her being able to receive that. To receive that. And not say, well, I, you know, I don't know exactly why you all, because, you know, you all is another isolation of, Mm -hmm. of a race so she's really good at you know listen to that and that's and, good yeah so it's on both sides it's both sides mm -hmm. both both people have to be willing to yeah. learn and to show empathy yes you know so that even even if i don't have your experience mm -hmm. and this this whole thing 
can be applicable in many ways. Many ways. Because when you marry, your your spouse may have an experience that you never had. Right. Because of that, if she is saying something that she is sensitive to, and you didn't have experience, you become insensitive right. because right. you don't have that experience. Right. And it takes some kind of wisdom to know that I may not have the experience, right. but I may I can be empathic. Right. Right. I'm, I'm empathic right. and 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 relate to this. So this is critical. How we marry it, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't have to be different cultures to learn the right way to blend. Because the Bible says that um, for this reason, a man will leave his family and they will team up with their wife right. and becoming one flesh. flesh. There's the leaving and cleaving and, cleaving and weaving. Mm -hmm. The three stages, no matter what, whether you're a same culture or different right, culture, right. There's, there's, there's a process that takes place. How did God or Christ or Christianity or the Bible help you all blend an African-American married to uh, an, an American, uh, African woman? Did God or Bible or Jesus, Holy Ghost, did that make any difference? Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Here's why. Husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church mm -hmm. and has given his life for her. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the pinnacle to my entire existence as a husband mm -hmm. because I realized that, that, that my job is to create a home where Christ lived and also to be a reflection of him. Mm. So when she sees me, she's actually seeing Christ. Mm -hmm. That's not always easy. And, wow. So therefore, because it's such a massive responsibility, there's a lot more uh, uh, weight as a husband mm -hmm. to ensure mm. that I'm the one who will create the, the, the environment. Yes. So she can say, here's why we do this mm. and be receptive to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, uh, Christ left heaven to come to earth mm. and he had to acclimate and blend and, yes, learn and blend earth and, blend. and live as a man, you know, because we you know, because we have a high priest who mm. is the feeling of our infirmity. Yes. Right. So if he didn't do that, he wouldn't have known. So for me, the, the Bible is probably the most significant thing that drives every part of my life because um that's my role as the head, and therefore the head has to create the openness and the environment. I want to talk more about the head thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but before that, I like what you just said, that God came to this earth, the reincarnation, mm -hmm. to come and relate to us. Right. So I see that in marriage, whenever you, you marry, you are like a missionary mm -hmm. to another family mm -hmm. that you have no idea, mm -hmm. the culture, the norms, the belief system in that in that ma marriage. It's the same thing that Christ came into the earth. Right. So you come to meet with your wife. And then both of you are from different training, different backgrounds, different different belief systems, and and that is why marriage sometimes is difficult yes. because two different personalities, right. belief systems coming together, and and when it works, the beauty of it. Yes, it is. Yes. And you said God, Jesus, Bible, mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the things that you think being a Christian is advantageous when you marry how does that impact the, the, the family um okay so being a the head mm -hmm. and knowing what the responsibilities are mm -hmm. if you notice you know there are more things for husband to do yes than there are for wives right so, uh, so as a christian if i am going to represent god here on earth and be a reflection of him. So when my wife sees me, she's seeing Christ within mm -hmm. me. Then the responsibility becomes is being able to 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 allow the Holy Spirit to be the one that speaks first. Mm -hmm. Even when I don't understand certain things. Um, example: mm -hmm. the first time uh, uh, she did something for me. Uh, um, it was a soup and like a um, fufu. Fufu. Yes. So she cooked fufu for you. Yes. I love it, by the way. Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Wache, mm -hmm. you name it. All kind of soup. Kinky. Kinky. Rice. Yes. Jollof oh, rice. Oh my god. You like yeah. you like jollof rice? Ooh. <laughs> that's kind of good. Stuff. That's an understatement. <laughs> when wow. she cooked that, uh -huh. you know, that's not a two day thing. That's maybe like a three or four hour thing, but, uh -huh. but that's not gonna last two days. I promise you. Really, you consume uh, everything. Uh, I promise you. <laughs> I promise. 
a wolf in wolf clothing. You hear me? And just wow. devour it. <laughs> but um, the first time, you know, she 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 cooked that, and um, you know, she sat down, and I'm like, okay, good. So, how do we eat this? And she like, mm-hmm. use your hand. I said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait, you want me to put my my finger in a hot soup, in a hot soup and eat that? And, fufu. and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> wow. I don't think that's going to be on this planet. So, yes. But then I thought about it. It's a norm. It's a norm. For her. It, it, it didn't require a for, thought. For it, her, it's just, it, let's go. But yeah. for you, how are you feeling? Um, apprehensive, apprehensive. Um, a bit stressed that I'm gonna get burned. <laughs> and um, so I found a middle ground. I said, "Tell you what, okay. Um, if I can just have a spoon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can um <laughs> navigate the hot soup, the hot soup a little bit. And then once it it it, it kind of calm down, I'll go on it. And so, she's like, "By all means." So she brought that in, and, and I kind of had. I'm like, "Man, this is really really good." And, and within like a couple of minutes, I'm like. <laughs> And it's running down, and the soup is so all coming. is dripping because you, you didn't know how to do that. Know. So I'm like, okay, so how do we? And she's like, well, you can't do like this. I said, now I got it. So it's a tilt. It's all in the tilt. You, you have to tilt your your hands. I'm sorry. It's in the tilt. Now, when you do that, I'm, I'm, let me tell you. Now, we from Africa, we didn't have to learn all that, mm-hmm. but you you have to learn yes. and probably come out with some principles to yes. make it work. Yes. And, 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 and so the principle that that, that I applied is, uh, um, so the Bible says, deal with her as unto knowledge. Yes. So it was understanding why she did and, and the impact it had on her mm-hmm. and then being able to share the empathy again, being able to mm-hmm. connect and share mm-hmm. because that was a connector for her. Right. And the fact that she sat down and did that for me. Mm. She was bringing me into her world and showing me, okay, here's how much I love you by preparing this. Wow. And I just ran with it. Let me see. If you have any questions, if you are watching us today and you have any questions, I want to see if somebody, you know, you can send us your questions and uh, uh, I, will, I will love to answer some of the questions. You are talking about cultural differences in marriage. And you don't have to, like David, he's married to an African woman. You don't have to. To have to to be in a different country, you can even marry two two Americans can marry with different cultures. Yes, even yes. in Ghana or Nigeria or Bahamas or Jamaica, for that matter. But how do we blend? And and you are saying that the having a mind to learn. Yes, and then the way we communicate mm-hmm. is critical. Then you also say that as a leader in the home, and I said I'll come back to that. And the reason why I want us to talk more about that is because. The Bible says the husband is the head of the wife. Right. Now, how how we interpret that is right. a whole oh, another problem. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about headship, the leader of the the man being the leader, what is your interpretation of that? So my uh, um, interpretation of that is because I am the head. Okay, there mm-hmm. are responsibilities that the head has. To 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 example. Uh, so I'll say, uh, um, headship is like a king and a kingdom. Okay. 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 Uh, within the kingdom, mm-hmm. there is a king. You know, there's a queen, and then you know there are lords below him. There is a set of um, government mm-hmm. or, 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 or main people. You know, who he advise and so, uh, um, you know, to make decisions. And then of course those decisions will come down. To right. Come down. So as a head. Because I know that I'm the head, then what I do is it is my responsibility to communicate. Okay. Okay. And say, Tan, here is what my vision is. What's your vision? Mm. Let's marry the two. Oh. And, and let's create that. So your that. your definition of headship mm-hmm. is let's marry the two. Integrate. Integrate. You know what I what what I what I say. The Bible says in Genesis that God made them in his image. Yes. The Trinity. The three in one God is so beautiful mm-hmm. that even up to date, theologians and right. church people have difficulty explaining the Trinity. Right. At one time, Jesus said, the Father is greater than I. And at that time, he says, I and the Father I are one. Are one. Right. And this is a mystery. Mm-hmm. So when you look at the Trinity and you look at marriage, Marriage is supposed to, supposed to be the reflection of the okay. Trinity, right. where the husband and the wife are what I call 
Trinity. Right. We we work together as the Trinity work mm-hmm. together. Right. Same way. Mm-hmm. It's not controlling. Right. It's not domineering. Right. It's not pushing. But the beauty of working side by side mm-hmm. is, I think, what is missing right. in our churches today. Yes, it is. And I think if you are the head or a husband, then you understand that there's just certain things you can't do. You can't abuse your wife. That That's an impossibility <laughs> because then you're out of the word. You, you can't talk down to her because that's also an impossibility because mm-hmm. God would never have sanctioned the head to destroy anything below. Yes. That he gave dominion over because mm-hmm. dominion means care yes so because that means care you have at mika's husband deal with her as unto now there's more of a responsibility to link with her yes okay and put her in a way that when god sees her he sees his beauty that is unique you know that is profound when you're talking about that because god didn't make somebody said that there's one theologian i think it's martin harry he said, God didn't make the woman from your head to right. control her, right. neither from your feet mm-hmm. to, to walk over, but your side. Mm-hmm. I like S-I-D, is side, yes. side by side. Mm-hmm. That ability to, you know, another person put it this way, he says, when it comes to husband leadership, I like a friend of mine, he's a coach, and he said is, I think Coach Daniel Grimson, he says, he doesn't call it leadership, mm-hmm. he call it Labership. Yes, and he is right. <laughs> he is right because um, it's it's la- loving leading. Right, right. Tell me what you're going to say. It, 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 it's I think why he's so right is simply because as a husband, when you realize what the Bible says and how it impacts your life, you realize that it, it's such a massive mandate to take on. Mm. So as a husband, you carry that. Okay, you carry that purpose and destiny inside of you to evolve mm. things that are around you mm-hmm. okay you're not trying to evolve your wife okay because she is separate and perfect exactly made, okay however your job is to enhance her mm. so she can be the god woman that she was meant to, to be, be not into the image that you want her to be mm. and i think that's kind of where we fall short. that's that's where we fall short mm-hmm. it's it's is is the image of God that God wants her to be, not what you want her to be. Mm-hmm. I think it boils down to who is in the center of this relationship. There you go. It's, so the, here, here we have eight, we have seven minutes to end our session today. And by the way, some questions. Tell us what you think about our show. This is our first time of doing this. So thank you. <laughs> so when when it boils down to who is the center of this marriage. And, and the reason why this is critical is in every marriage, uh, in every marriage or in every uh, marriage, I think that either personality mm. is ruling mm, mm. or Christianity mm. is mm. ruling, Brother mm. David. <laughs> mm. Either somebody's personality. Right. Now, if your personality is a reflection of Christ, praise God. Right. But if your personality is not consistent with your God, right, right. and that is what is leading the home, <laughs> then we got some issues. Yes. So the question becomes, what is inf- who, why, who, whom are we accountable to? Right, right. And I think you nailed it dead on the head because we can write a book on just that one alone. <laughs> you know, we can sit down and create a book, all seven chapters, and we can be here for, for about six months doing that. Doing that. Yeah, because accountability is the key. Mm-hmm. Um, because I understand who I hear from, mm-hmm. it overrides my senses and my ability to try to override her. Mm-hmm. Because I'm accountable to God first, and therefore mm-hmm. everything I do, no woman will ever submit to a man that don't love God. Wow, she was never programmed for that. So mm. if you don't love God, she she can't hear you. She can't hear I'm you. I'm sorry, it, it, you know there is a spiritual wax that stops her from hearing because you have not submitted. However, if you have submit yourself to God and you're leading as Christ, and she's seeing that reflection, submission never is an issue. It, it's on an issue. And another issue that we also run into before the Bible said that women Mm -hmm. should submit themselves to their own husbands Husbands, in Ephesians, Mm -hmm. it began by saying, submit one to another. Preach, brother. 
And that part we always forget. We, 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 oh, no, no, we don't want to, especially mm -hmm. men don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. How do you tell me that as a, as, a, as a man, a strong man from Ghana, an Ashanti man, a Ashanti kingdom man, I should submit myself to my wife? Right. It's the most beautiful thing you can ever do. It's beautiful. Yes. So, submission is the beauty of life. Because without it, we cannot manage what the beauty of God creation. Right. The whole world submit otherwise there will be chaos, chaos in the right. world now i i don't know why men want to talk about women submitting but that quotation that says submit to one another we right. are not interested in that no, one we're not and, and i think uh, um most of the time we view submission as i have to give up my right and submission has nothing to do with your rights mm -hmm. submission is a lifestyle of worship Mm -hmm. And I think because we don't see submission as worship, yes, then there is a detachment. You know? mm. and, and I think we judge sub, uh, uh, submission by what the world says. Well, man has always abused women. And so mm. a woman's like, well, I'll never submit to no man. Ain't no man going to be, you know. But that that was never what the scriptures meant. Yes. Okay. You know, when, when, when I submit to God, I say, Lord, I come in alignment with your will and with your word and mm -hmm. with your way. I will live in accordance with that to create synergy okay so when you speak i can hear you wow you know we have three minutes to go please if this has been a blessing send me send us your comments send us uh the, the other day someone sent us uh, uh, a message from maryland yeah. she says i love what you and your wife do talking to me and then she wants us to talk to, to do a, a show about money and marriage okay we actually did it we taped it yesterday but i'm saying that to say that if you have anything that you want us to treat or talk about we are all learning. We yes. need to help each other. But David, yeah. I'd like you to take two or three minutes. I'd like you to talk to people who are watching us. Is there anything, one or two things that will help people uh, who, are, who, are, who are married to really uh, um, work their differences in a, in a way that is comfortable, mm -hmm. that Christ reigns? Sh share with us. Um, so I'll share this in about a minute. Yeah. So so we can we can do it. I'll wrap up. So there's nothing wrong in being different. You're supposed to be different. <laughs> you know, she is female, you are male. That yes. alone. <laughs> okay, how we see the world, that alone. Example, my son will drop, and as long as his eyes is in his head, or oh, we'd be all right. But my mom is like, come here, and she'll hold him and she'll kiss him. I'm thinking, why? Mm -hmm. The boy has to be tough. It's just a difference in how we <laughs> express ourselves. In the context of marriage, however, okay. You can be different. You're supposed to be different. It's in the differences that you are learning. Mm. Okay, more about marriage was meant to expose you so you can grow up. Mm. Okay, that's what marriage does. So every time she pressed that button, it's not pressing on her side. It's you're the one that needs to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. So what marriage does, marriage allows you to be exposed and to be naked to your wife or to your husband. Wow. So That's then good. God can come in and do the healing. Mm -hmm. So allow her to be different, allow him to be different, and then create in the middle how we can take our the, the two different pieces mm -hmm. and make something wonderful. Mm -hmm. How we can take jollof, okay, and some goat <laughs> meat and make that absolutely wonderful. <laughs> right. So Africa meat meet uh, 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 um, Jamaica and all of a sudden you know you have jollof and some goat meat all of a sudden yes. different flavor wow I like that I like the goat meat of Jamaica and jollof of uh, Africa uh -huh. like Nigeria and we put together yes here, here is thank you so much here is in my in a closing this is what I want to say in a marriage that does not have accountability mm -hmm. or that doesn't have whom we listen to mm -hmm. is bound to fail yes if me and my wife have God on our mind, that we want to please God, if I want to please God in my marriage, it's different. Yes. If I don't care about God, I don't care about my wife. Right. But if I care about God, that I will be accountable to God, and I am accountable to God, that one day he will, he will ask me how I treated my wife. Right. right. If my wife thinks the same way, both of, both of us, will 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 humble ourselves right. and live right i know that you know our time is up we wanted to close it by 4 30 it's a it's a test today but david thank you so very it's much been a for pleasure. coming and and i pray that again send us questions we're going to close here 
and and then uh, every week we would try to do something. I'm 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 thinking about you know uh, doing this weekly weekly show. God bless you, God bless you. and then I will see you next time. Thank you. Amen. Wow, that's gonna be powerful. That's gonna be good, sir.